So far from Rwanda, expectations to return Central African Republic to normalcy are high as the two former prime ministers battle for votes in the upcoming run of February 14th election. Africa 54's Esther Githuyu, what has our report? Neither of the two former prime ministers, Anise George Dologile and Foster Tuadera, garnered 50% of the vote required in the first round held on December 30, 2015, to avoid a runoff ballot. The election is being held to replace a transitional government installed in 2014 and led by Catherine Samba Panza. Central African Republic has witnessed a long, tumultuous period since its independence from France in 1960, with rebellions and coups that have divided the country along religious and ethnic lines. The most recent conflict began in 2013, after a rebel leader, Michel Jotodia, overthrew the government of longtime President Francois Bozizé. The conflict saw long-running battles between the Muslim rebel group known as Seleka and a Christian militia group known as Antibalaka. Hundreds were killed and thousands fled their homes. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Power, visited the country to see the situation firsthand and described the situation then as horrific. Untold horrors continue in small villages throughout the countryside, and more than 19,000 Muslims are trapped in the capital too afraid of anti-Balaka forces to leave their hiding places. Displaced civilians could be seen leaving the country, while others remained in deplorable conditions with no one to attend to those injured, including children. Valerie Amos, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, described the situation as extremely grave. The situation in the Central African Republic is extremely grave, and urgent action is required by everyone if we're going to prevent further bloodshed. As violence continued, the United Nations created a force to patrol city streets in the capital, Bangui, trying to keep the situation calm. But soon, allegations emerged that some soldiers were involved in sexual misconduct against civilians. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon expressed his anger. I believe the disturbing number of allegations we have seen in many countries, but particularly in the Central African Republic, in the period before UN peacekeepers were deployed and since speaks to the need to take action now. Enough is enough. As the two former prime ministers run tough campaigns to woo voters, the country's food situation is alarming. The World Food Program Regional Coordinator, Margot van der Felden, says hundreds of civilians have no idea where their next meal will come from. One out of two people in Central African Republic don't have enough food to eat and don't know where the next meal is coming from. The people most affected are the returnees and the hundreds and thousands of people that remain internally displaced inside Central African Republic. In his last stop of an historic tour of Africa, Pope Francis visited Bangui saying, I come to the Central African Republic as a pilgrim of peace and as an apostle of hope. The pontiff visited the Grand Mosque of Kuduko and celebrated Mass at the Notre Dame Cathedral in the capital, preaching reconciliation between Muslims and Christians. Central African Republic is rich in gold, uranium, oil and diamonds, yet it remains one of the world's poorest nations. The candidate that wins the run of elections faces enormous tasks to restore democracy rebuild the country's institutions and unite the people who have been devastated by years of political turmoil. Esther Gidu Ewart, VOA News, Washington. Well, I want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we covered. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCorry.